smells good. It does smell good though. Can you smell that? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Start the day. So it's uh, morning time. I'm up. Morning routine's been done. So I got up. I've done my done my vacuums. Then I've done my kind of meditation slash stretching with my motivational speech. Get the mind right. Get the body right. Set for the day. Still fasted though. So now it's time for that coffee. It wakes me up, you know, with the smell. <clears throat> but we fasted, so this is black, no milk. And we wait about another, say, three hours until we start eating again. So in that time, I sit, start getting my work done. Whilst Bailey licks her feet in the background. Bailey! 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 Hi. Yeah, trying to work over here. I'll see you in a few hours for some food. <laughs> I smell your fish breath through my mandana. So everyone's always asking what headphones I use. They are some Sony, you ready for this? Write it down, big one. MDR ZX 330BTs. 50 quid Amazon. Take a lick in, keep on ticking. Uh, well worth it, well worth a buy. Come feet and stay on your head while you're running, which is nothing I want to talk to you about. So, in the past what I've done is set a playlist to go running for. And I realized the reason I was setting a playlist was to try and escape from the run, to try and trick my brain into listening to music that I enjoyed, rather than acknowledging what I was doing, which is running and being in an uncomfortable area, something I don't like doing, something that hurts. And by listening to music, I'm trying to detract from that. I don't want to detract from that. I want to live in that fucking discomfort. I want to own it, and I want to make that discomfort, that pain that I'm feeling, my point of progression, it lets me know I'm working. So what I found to keep me in that mindset, rather than escape, I want to embrace it. And I started listening to motivational speeches whilst running, and it's so much better because Whilst you're feeling this pain, you listen to this positive speech in your ears, you're listening to this motivational talk that gives you goosebumps, but it's hurting with every step that you're running. You, when you're feeling tired, there's this positive energy in your ears speaking to you. So you're, you're in it, you're embracing it, you're feeling that pain, but there's a positive sound coming into your ears that keeps you driving. And it's retraining that mechanism of the brain to feel pain, but positivity at the same time. And that's where we want to be, because if we ever feel too comfortable, or if we're ever trying to escape the pain, trying to avoid it, that's when we're, we're not progressing. That's when we're not pushing ourselves. So the body adapts. We lift the body up, we raise it up. Once it's there, it'll adapt and it'll sit there. We need to constantly be pushing. We're an adaptable mechanism and that's what we need to do is retrain the brain and retrain the mind. It's a type of thing. Some of you, are, your priorities are out of line and you're partying right now, you broke. You broke in your relationships, you broke in your health. Like for real, you broke it, you broke, you broke. Listen to that, the freaking, just the, in the voice, they're like, ah, just, and, you're because you're not and you listen to the words, and you're running, and when that shit starts to hurt, and you're running, these voices come into your head, and then you start to develop your own inner voice, your own positive voice, and that's what most people lack, is that inner voice, that inner drive that tells them to keep fucking pushing, keep fucking grinding, keep fucking going, get up, don't fall down and stay down, get the fuck back up, and I do silly little things on the run as well, so when I run down to the bottom of the garden, I don't open the gate, to go onto the run, I jump over the gate. And when I come back, I climb back over that gate into the garden, I don't open it. When I'm running, and I'm running around a corner, I don't take the inside route, I take the outside route. All these little things, they just add up over time to just make you always be testing yourself and putting yourself in the harder situation, but owning it and defeating it and overcoming it. And this is what we're doing, we're retraining the brain. Mind, body, both strong, that's gonna create success. I just turn that volume up. Here we go.
I couldn't be lazy. Whoo! <sighs> One of the hardest things I've found about these runs is I don't like carrying water. One, because I don't like having things in my hands because it distracts from my mental concentration. And, uh, and two, I want to train myself to not be reliant on anything when I'm out. So it's just me out with me, getting me back. That's the great thing about when you run the road instead of a treadmill. Once you're away, you have to get home. You have to get home and it's harder. Those surfaces change from, from grass, tarmac, to pavement, to wood, to stone. It makes everything work, all that core stabilization. Before I went on that run, I, uh, I was hurting. I had like a, a pain shooting from kind of the top of my glute, up into my lower back and down the back of my leg. Trap nerves, something silly, you know. When you put your body into something new, you're gonna get aches, you're gonna get pains. Some of them are gonna be good pains, some are gonna be bad pains. I could have opted out today, I could have not run, but I did, I went anyway. Embrace fucking pain, you know what? I'm back, I made it, I made the same route, I didn't take shortcuts, and my body's fine. I've come back, that pain's gone. Had I not gone, I could have been sat here, and been a day down, and still in pain. Instead, I'm here, I'm accomplished, and I'll earn the breakfast, so. Breakfast time. <laughs> Food. I am still fasting throughout the day, so I don't really eat till one, two o'clock every day. I aim to do a minimum of 12 hours fast, sometimes 16. If I feel like I get up and the coffee's enough to see me through, then I'll maybe do 16, but I do a minimum of 12. And so we have three medium eggs, cherry tomatoes, half of a sweet yellow pepper, uh, 30 grams of goat cheese. Then after this, what I'm gonna eat is homemade protein banana bread. Um, recipes are up on, I think there's a Gymshark vlog on that one for you, recipes. I'll link it in that description, click away. Plus, I love these. And these are like little Whitworth like nut shots. So in here is like, um, it's got cashew nuts in there, a little bit of salt, which is always great in the morning, especially after being on a run. So at the moment, what I'm aiming for is around about 180 to 200 grams of protein a day, 150 carbs, 150 fats. What I'm doing is letting my activities dictate the way my body is running, whether it's burning fat or sitting at maintenance. That rocks in around about 2,850 calories. Now, sometimes I'll go a little higher on the fats and a little lower on the carbs. What I'm not finding at the moment after doing this high fat diet, which is effectively what it is, it's a high fat diet, moderate carb. It's not low carb. 150 carbs is not low. Low is like 50. I'm finding zero craving for sweet stuff. And I had a real sweet tooth before. I used to wander into the pantry and be like, a mm, little bit sweetness, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But the only thing I crave now for sweet is fruit. So I eat a lot of berries, things like that. So that's really cool. It's actually changed. I'd say after the second week that started to happen. And that's been a massive difference in the way I snack and the way I control my food. And especially when I'm out, I'm just not tempted to go and buy a lot of that shit. It's great. It's been fantastic. But the macros for this breakfast, obviously, with that in mind, I'm aiming for that higher fat kind of side of things. 23 carbs, 33 fat, and 53 protein. All in this little get up here. So I'm going to eat this, and I'm going to show you what supplements I'm going to be using throughout this entire time, or have been using already and then we're gonna skip gym, then more food, then I'm gonna go and eat out at Nando's. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. And we're gonna do that by logging what we're gonna do later on in the day, earlier on, so that we don't accidentally spill over. But first, supplements. Kraken piss ingredients. Yes, we'll be bringing back a little bit of the Kraken piss. <laughs> this is pretty much the entirety of what I run. Now, obviously I have whey protein powders as well, but tend to put that more into foods and desserts and stuff like that rather than make shakes and drink them. But that doesn't mean I don't. So today I will probably do that if my protein levels, because we're going to eat out, tend to dip a little bit. And when I come back home, if I don't want to eat something big, I'll have a shake then. That's when I tend to utilize the shakes though. It's when I need to get some protein in, in a high impact, small volume, because I'm not that hungry but I still need to hit targets. And that's what protein powder does. So anybody that tells you that protein powder is some super secret magic tool, they're lying to you to make money. It's powdered, optimized food. 
That's it. Nothing magical. Parents, it's not drugs. So other than the whey protein, which is the best one by the way, whey protein is the best, most versatile. You can mix other stuff in it. You can bump carbs up by throwing things in. You can bump fats up by throwing things in. But if you get a pre-mix, you can't do that. So best value for money is your whey's and, what's the one called? Isolate. Isolate. <laughs> Why <laughs> that just went. <laughs> so we're not going to go on massively about these. I'm just going to blast through them. Um, Pre-workouts, I do use them. I don't use them every day. But what I do use, obviously, EHP. I'm back with EHP for another year because I rate the supplements. The actual ingredients, the profiles, everything is good. So I'm happy with them and I'll continue to use them. If something's good, I keep it in. The RP Max, this is my Stim No Pump. And then the PSI, this is No Stims, very important, but Vasodilation and Pump. So this means that I can utilize this one and not smash my beta receptors because I'm a coffee drinker, I'm a tea drinker. So I don't want to be overloading on that. So it's great to be able to split those and then we put them together and <sighs> crack and piss. Outside of that, now I'm starting running. This is going to compound the joints alongside the weightlifting. So joint formulas, joint repair. This is a great one. Prevention, better than cure. So alongside this as well, what I will probably start running is some glucosamine. Vitamins, this is standard every day. This is a good one for men. This is one, so you want to make sure that when you look at the profiles along here, that it has in it things like zinc and selenium. If it tends to have that in it, it's probably got a pretty good profile in there. Be careful taking these later on. They usually have a big vitamin B kick in them. Vitamin B will keep you awake. If, if you're gonna get one thing, if you're gonna put your money into one thing, one of the most studies, most researched, effective products you can buy is creatine. This is a micronized create. This is five gram serving only necessary per day. Do not load it. That's an old school bullshit mentality that people use to make you buy more stuff. Five grams a day. If you want to be nitpicking, take it after your workout, but more importantly, just make it consistently. Every day, five grams, five grams, five grams. Drop the mic. We'll cover one more. We'll cover one more, you ready? <gasps> it's those muscle building super mass monster BCAAs. Nah. -uh. Okay, the truth of BCAAs. They are good, they're a great supplement, but they aren't the most cost effective if you are using them during a bulk. Why? Because if you're in a bulk or a gain, let's not say bulk, we don't like bulk, lean gain, you should be getting everything you need from your food. These come into play when you're in some kind of deficit because they're gonna help bolster the immune system, help that muscle repair and keep you going, keep you healthy. Plus, if you take them into your workout, they can break down to glucose to help fuel your workouts. So optimization in between meals, BCAAs, when you're in a deficit of some form. Make sense? That's how you maximize supplements that'll actually work. Oh yes. So it's my favorite part of the day. I have my coconut oil coffee. So I have 20 grams of coconut oil, or you can use MCT oil. It's a great way of easily getting in 20 grams of fat, and it actually makes a coffee taste pretty damn good. Alongside that, I have a very lovely looking cottage pie. I'm only gonna have half a portion of this. This utilizes ready mash, which is a resistance carb. Actually has 10 grams of carbohydrate per 100 compared to normal potato. Black magic. Some of the resistance carbs that they add in. Anyway, let's just go with it. Don't question certain things in life. <laughs> it's made with extra lean mints, so this is a healthy version, but obviously I need the fats. So on top of this one, it's 30 grams of cheddar on top. So this has been logged, half portion already in there. If you want to know how to make this, the healthy version, and then you can add your cheese on top, the link will be in the description below, a video on Laney's Kitchens. So you can go and check that out in the links below. So I'm gonna eat this, drink this, hit up maybe a smidgen of pre-workout, and then it's gym time. We are now off to Nando's to prove that you can go out and have fun. Not only are we going to Nando's, we're gonna go bowling, and they said it couldn't be done. Leather pants, and they're probably right. <laughs> so, like I said before, and I said it before, and then I forgot to completely tell you, but I did it, and I logged it. So we, I knew we were gonna go out tonight. So what did I do? I went on, and I logged what I'm gonna eat at Nando's tonight, so I knew where my numbers were gonna be before I went out, so that when I'm eating in the house during the day, it's already in there as if I've eaten it, and that's gonna help keep me on track. Now, what I'm gonna do when I get there is I'm gonna show you what I eat that allows you to order a single Nando's meal but eat two, so let's go. Hummus, so this is a staple of my daily food anyway. It's in the fridge all the time. You can get loads of variations of it, like chili, paprika, all that kind of stuff. It's great because it's chickpeas. It's, it's a kind of a, a naturally orientated product to have in there, but it's super tasty. You can eat it with low carb impact things like celery, which I like to do. Here, they give it you with pizza bread. So now you can find Nando's on your MyFitnessPal and it's some, I was gonna say a word, 
It's bollocks. <laughs> it's bollocks. They think that this is 100 grams of carb and something silly. So what I do when that happens is I find a generic one from say a supermarket, I find the worst case scenario and I log that. I know this is roughly about 100 gram serving, so I log 100 grams of Tesco's standard hummus. Comes in at like 26 fat. Look at the pitters, they've given me like one and a half pitters here. So I'm literally gonna eat half a pitter. I'm gonna do big ass scoops. And then what if I've got any hummus left over, I'll have that with the chicken that I get later. So that's how I kind of do my thing. I don't use any of the drizzle, because it's just too oily and I'm not a big fan of oil on my food, like just swilling around. So this is my starter every time, and I'm gonna have this alongside double chicken pitter with cheese, and then I get a side salad with a super multi-grain side. And I'll show you how I make that one meal into two. I like to hold small bottles wherever I go, because it helps to just make you look that much bigger. <laughs> Same goes for driving smart cars. The hummus didn't last, it's gone. There was not much left, but you can see, uh, I wasn't the only one eating these, so I did only eat half the pitta, 100 grams of hummus gone. Now, here's my meal. So there's my double chicken pitta with the cheese in there. This is my uh, super grain salad, and this is the side salad, mixed leaf side salad. Now what you do, you get in here, remove a singular chicken breast. You take your salad, you take the chicken, Now if you're dieting, this is a heck of a trick to volumize. So we now end up with a chicken pitta full of cheese, lovely peppers, chicken, medium spice, and then a full medium spice salad to enjoy alongside. Boom, Lexi's top tip to make two meals out of one purchase at Nando's. You're welcome. So now we're out, Nando's is done. One little tip, if you can get pineapple instead of the cheese. So now a little bit of bowling, and uh, you're about to get Munson. <laughs> so only show like obviously all the cool shit like strikes and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We just got a lift. That was the problem. That was the problem, yeah. Blue ball and you need red ball. Because if you've got blue balls, you need to be doing something <laughs> much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a strike? Yeah. No. Or piss off. That's what it's wrong. I think I didn't get this. I think I didn't do this. Let's see. Oh, that would have been sweet if it had worked. <laughs> How to roll. <laughs> I have to be wiping my hands after each go. That's why. What I'm doing is carrying over the slick from the last run. And that's affecting my future runs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not following my own advice, man. Yeah. I'm letting shit carry over. <laughs> this isn't a real sport. <laughs> I'm not playing with you anymore, Jay. I'm not playing with you anymore. Can I just go home now? I'm paying you to embarrass me. Just bowling lessons now, <laughs> more than visual work. That would have worked. So, as you can see, uh, we're gonna finish it here. It's not about the competition, it's just about the sportsmanship and the camaraderie. It's not about who got strikes and who didn't. You know, at the end of the day, walk it's taking strikes. part that counts. Walk away strikes. Fuck up, Jay. <laughs> So in everything logged and I was left over with a final tally to make up of 25 protein, 25 fat, and I had 10 carbs left. So we've gone with a Kvarg protein yogurt. This is a low carb yogurt made with sweeteners and it's a high in protein. I got my 50 grams of fresh raspberries and 50 grams of peanut butter 
cheap and cheerful stuff just from your local supermarket. And that tops me off with a total daily value of 202 grams of protein, 147 fat, and 154 carbohydrates. <laughs> carbohydrates. And that's it. That is how I run my days, roughly. That is how you go out and eat. That is how you go out and have fun. And as you've hopefully seen, it's a nice balance of the lot. It's a nice balance of the mix. And now what I'm gonna do is judge my weight. I check myself every day. I weigh in in the morning, fasted. I make sure I'm not feeling overly dehydrated. If I do, I just note it down. And I watch my weight. If it starts to trickle down half a pound a week, pound a week, and I'm feeling good and I'm starting to look better, that's perfect. That's my cardio that's dictating the weight loss. That's not me restricting food. My goal is to not restrict my food and keep shaping up. I want my food to be a support system. I don't want my diet to become a starvation system. So if you want to stay healthy, train it as much as you can. Try and be more active. Go do that functional shit. Get outside. Get out of the goddamn gym. There is more to life than just the gym. The gym has its place, but there's so many other things you can be doing, so try not to get those blinkers going. I hope this has been a bit of an eye-opener for you. I'm going to sit here and enjoy this, and then we're going to finish my night off with a bit of yo, ho, ho. What about the rum? This is a little glass of a sneaky drink I love called the Kraken. It's a spiced dark rum. This is an alcoholic beverage. This is absolutely fine. You are allowed to go out and have fun, be with friends, go to gatherings, go to parties, go to events. Yes, we need to be consistent with our food. Yes, it benefits us to have that day-to-day -day consistency. But don't ever be afraid to add in a little bit of fun, add in a little bit of time with friends, time with family. I've said this on a regular basis because it's true. Your life is the center. Gym, diet, all that goes around your life, not your life around the gym and the diet. Do your research, understand food and nutrition, alcohol. Alcohol is its own macro. In moderation, alcohol can actually be a benefit to you. In moderation, in control, there's a whole host of proven medical benefits to having a couple of units of alcohol a week. That's not saying if you want to be teetotal, that's absolutely fine. But don't be afraid to sit back, kick back, relax. Do the things that you love. We're here to live life. We're here to be progressive. We're here to embrace everything around us. So I'm finishing my night off. A little bit of stand-up comedy on TV. A little bit of good company. My peanut butter and jelly high protein yogurt, my little bit of pirate juice. And I hope you've learned something from this. If you made it this far, and you like a little bit of a cheeky, a little bit of a cheeky, and you like the video, give me a thumbs up and hit me up in the comment section below. We will see you with more of these full days of eating. We will see you with more raw training videos. You are going to see a huge progressive change in mindset and body from this point on. I hope you'll join me on the journey and I hope you put into practice what I'm putting through this lens to you guys. This shit's free. If you don't like it, that's cool. If this has opened your eyes for things, fantastic. We'll go forward as a crew, as a team. So until the next video, I've been Lex. I'm gonna give you a boom, baby, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Good night. Lately, I've been doing shit different. Cooking like a chef, I've been all up in the kitchen. Had to make a move, had to make a little distance. A lot of people tripping, they could never see the vision. Fuck that, tell them bounce.